Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mili and on this channel I talk about yarn. I talk about knitting and crochet. I share my works in progress, my finished objects and I share yarn holes with you. I also have a few knitting tutorials that I have added to my channel and I'm going to be adding some more as I go along. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. If you have not subscribed to my channel and this is the kind of content that interests you, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you may be notified every time I upload a new video. On today's video, I'm going to be sharing my update on my temperature blanket. Today is January 1st, 2024. So happy new year, everybody. I plan to start my 2024 temperature blanket today and I'm going to be uh, sharing with you where I am with my planning, the things I have done to prepare and what I'm going to be doing, the, uh, all that stuff, the planning, the, the yarn, the, the, the pattern, all that stuff. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you on this video. So let's get started. So let's talk about the yarn first. So I'm going to be using uh, impeccable yarn uh, from Loops and Threads. It's, it's from Michaels. And this yarn is 100% acrylic, it's 285 yards, and it's a four weight. And the recommended hook size is uh, five millimeters. And if you're going to knit with this yarn, then you need a US eight or um, a five millimeters knitting needle. So this is what I'm going to be using. Um, it's very soft, I like it, and there's plenty in each ball of yarn, so I think it's a good budget-friendly yarn for a temperature blanket. So um, I'm going to be crocheting my um, temperature blanket. Initially, when I thought about it, I was debating about whether to crochet or to knit it, but then I settled on crochet because I think, uh, or at least when I'm crocheting, I do not have as many things to carry around as when I am knitting. Plus, I'm thinking this blanket is going to be 300 plus stitches. So it's going to be long. And that needs, requires a big, big knitting needle in terms of length. And I have that, but I didn't want to do that the first time. Probably in the future, I'm going to need it. But this year, I settled on crochet. And I'm going to be using... Let me move, move the yarn out of the way. I'm going to be uh, using a linen stitch. And I did a little swatch here. So this is my swatch using linen stitch and I settled on this stitch because it's short and it's pretty, especially when you're doing it in multiple colors, it really stands out and I'm thinking for 365 rows, 300 plus uh, stitches, if you do an, a longer stitch then the blanket is going to really be big. But since this is the first time I'm doing this, uh, I wanted to uh, try it first. And then if it, it's not that big, then maybe next time I'll use a different stitch. But for this year, this is the stitch that I'm going to be using. Uh, so, and then I decided to do, I'm going to be doing 340 stitches. And... Um, Initially, when I planned this uh, blanket, I had 15 colors. These are 15 colors. But when I started writing down and assigning temperatures, I kind of ran out. Um, no, I was done with the assigning before the 15 colors. 
So these three colors, which was going to be in the fall, ended up having no temperatures assigned to them. Or at least the method that I was using, I didn't get to these three colors. So what I have decided is I'm going to leave these colors out and then um, this neutral color here, I'm going to use it to separate my months. So for example, when I'm done with January, then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to um, crochet a row of in this color. So I'll have this separating each month. And then these two, uh, maybe I'll use them next time. Uh, then the other thing is um, I don't have a specific day that I'm going to be working on this blanket because this is not the only project that I'm going to have this year. I'm going to have other projects going on. So I don't want to designate a specific day, but my goal is to make sure that I'm not behind because if I am behind, I'm thinking it's going to be hard to catch up because it's uh, a lot of stitches. So I'm going to make sure at least I, I work on it every week and keep up with it. Uh, and then um, the other thing in my planning was uh, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be updating my progress at least at least on the minimum once a month, but I'll shoot for more, but life happens. And so I don't wanna uh, put myself under too much pressure because there's other things that are going on in my life and I don't wanna be rushing and, you know, being stressed about it. So I plan to do at least once a month, I'll update you on my progress. So that's, about the stitches and the yarn that I'm using. And now I'm going to share what I found out there when I was doing my research. So I found this booklet and it was a downloadable as a PDF. It was a free download. I found it on somebody's blog. I'm going to leave the information at the bottom if you're interested in it. And I'm going to leave the other links to other blogs that helped me when I was planning for this blanket. So I'm going to leave all that linked down below so that if you're interested, you can also go and check them out. So, but the one that I found really helpful or the one that really interest, interested me was this booklet was being offered on, it wasn't a booklet, it was just a PDF download on someone's blog. And I put uh, on the top, I put the cover of my blanket there and I just call it Millie's Temperature Blanket 2024. But um, I downloaded the PDF pages and then I went to Office Mark and I had it bound into a little notebook. It's not really little, it's just bound nicely to where it's going to be in one spot. And this PDF has instructions. So it's called uh, Stitch Scoop Temperature Blanket How to Guide. And this person was offering it with other uh, very helpful information on her website. And the first page has temperature blanket tips and tricks. That's what, what's on the first page. And it tells you color palettes, solid versus speckles, temperature colors. It's a lot of good information in here. And then it has pattern ideas over here. And then it has tips down here. And then when you go to the, the following page, you have your planning guide here. And you have a place to put the location. And then you have temperature. You will track. And then it has your color guide over here. So a lot of very, very helpful information. And uh, this person has created this as a free download guide. And then it has your months from January all through December. So how cool is that? 
so I found this very helpful and as that's why I made it into a notebook um, so that it's easy for me to keep track and it's very helpful in the planning process so that is one of the things that I found and then um, when I, I decided that I am going to be knitting, I'm, I'm going to be crocheting my blanket for the place where I work. And that is uh, when I started assigning the temperatures for the different colors. It's that's how I lost those three colors because I know how hot it can be and how cold it can be. It rarely goes below 30 degrees. But when it comes to being hot, it goes over 100 degrees and that can last for a while like last year we had a uh, uh, hundred plus temperatures for a long time so I think that is why I ended up losing some of the colors and I am not done with assigning them completely because what I've found out is that you know you start with this great idea or this thing in your mind that I'm going to assign these temperatures from here to here and then when you start to write it down and to match your colors, it kind of starts to change. And so I'm using an erasable pen here because I know I'm going to go back and redo it again. And I, I'm going to find pens that are sim uh, I'm going to use uh, erasable pens and then I'm, because I know that I'm going to delete, I'm going to erase and change things here and there so that is what I have so far on the guide and on the what I'm going to be writing on and all that and then I'm going to be doing the lowest temperature and I know that people have talked about finding temperatures from this website I think it's called temperature underground or something like that but I'm going to make mine as simple as possible. I'm using the weather app on my phone. I'm using the weather app on my phone to track my temperatures and I'll look at it every week and write down the temperatures for the, the lowest temperature for the week. And that is what I'm going to go by because I'm doing temperatures for this year. So that is what I'm going to do. And then um, uh, I'll just record. I think the app gives you temperatures for seven days. So I'm going to record them in seven days increment. So I'll be looking at the temperature on Monday and then recording it for that week. Um, and then I found this interesting on the pay on this every month it has places you need this month how cool is that and then it has memorable days and then you have your notes but i think this is interesting because i am one of those people that take my project everywhere with me and i wasn't planning to take this temperature blanket anywhere with me because i think it's very bulky but now that i have seen this little place here i think i'll take it with me so that I can have something to write on those uh, I can have something to write in this box because it would be nice to go back and look and see where you needed you know making memories and making uh, you know just memorable mom moments so and I think like here memorable days I'm thinking this would be like when it goes to like a hundred and something and you can barely walk outside because of how hot it is or sometimes when it gets crazy and then it's very cold one day and then towards the end of the week the temperature has gone up to 80 you know so that's that's interesting because that's what happens here where I live and so um, I found this notebook very interesting and binding it together like this puts everything in one place for me and makes it easy to manage so if you're interested in this kind of information then i'll leave the link to this website or blog and you can go check it out because i found it very very useful
Now let's talk about storage. Because when you're working on this blanket, you're going to have a ton of yarn. And so I had different ideas about where I was going to store my yarn. And initially, I thought I was going to buy a bigger basket like this one. Uh, this is something I found in the, at my house. I think it used to be my daughter's. And when I was planning the blanket, I was using this but i cannot fit all my yarn here the yarn that i want to i'm going to be using it's not gonna fit here neither is the blanket because once you when once i start working on the blanket then it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger so my my plan was go look for a bigger basket like this one and have your yarn uh set up nicely in there but then uh, around Thanksgiving, we ordered food from Cracker Barrel at work, and it came in this nice box that I'm going to show you in a second. So it came in this big box. How cool is that? So this big box it's very ideal for what I'm doing. And it comes with a cover, and then you can carry it from the side, and it's very sturdy, it's very, very strong. And one of my colleagues said, by the way, you know those Cracker Barrel boxes are very good for Christmas ornaments. I think uh, that's what she uses them for. You know, to store Christmas ornaments because it's very strong, and it, it's, it's just well built. And so when I saw this box, I said, yeah, I want that box, but I'm going to use it for my temperature blanket. And that is what I'm doing. So I'm not going to buy a basket. I'm going to use this. And if you look inside, you can see that my yarn fits in there perfectly. So I have caked all my yarn. So they are all in cakes like this because that's how I like to uh, work on them. So they are all caked and ready to go. And then I have arranged them. I'm trying to arrange them the way that I'll use them, the way the, the colors, how they follow each other on my blanket. But it's not precise but I know, I know what I'm doing with each color, so I'll go back and put it in order completely, but everything fits in there, and I still can, there's still room to add another layer of yarn, and so the only thing with this basket is I don't really like this color, especially I don't want to see this all year. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like Cracker Barrel and all that, but I don't want to see that all year. So I had this bright idea to use contact paper to cover this box. And so I went to uh, Dollar Tree, and this is the only pretty contact paper that I found there. And it's I didn't... This was, uh, from what all the, the options that they had, this was the only one that I liked. But I feel like there is no color. I like a lot of color. Like I like a lot of reds and oranges, you know. I, I want a lot of color. But this one is just plain black and white. And I like floral print. And this is floral print, but I just think that I want it to have more color. But I bought it because... I was thinking if I go to Walmart and I don't find anything, then I can settle for this. And then I went to Walmart and they didn't have what I was thinking I wanted. I like floral print and I found this Pioneer Woman uh, contact paper. That's what it looks like. And I like it, but I feel like it's missing something. It's, it's floral, 
it has color but i still feel like it's missing something so i got one of these just to come and test it and then i tested it on the cover and that's how the black looks like that's how the black looks like and then that's how the Faunia woman floral looks like i kind of like this one more than this one i don't know why even though i love color so right now i'm still trying to figure out which one i'm going to use but i also went to amazon and i found some some very pretty prints and i think i'll get one from there and i will use this on the inside because i like it i think it will be pretty on the inside and then these i'll use to line my kitchen drawers or something um so the other thing with the contact paper is that it's not <laughs> so easy to install but especially because i'm installing it on a box but i think i'll get it done because i love to diy things and once i am done and settled on what i am doing with this box uh then i'm going to share with you what it is and it i want it to be pretty you know when i carry it around or let's say if it's upstairs and i want to send my grandbaby to come grab it for me then i can say you know it's that pretty box and then she won't miss it or whoever won't miss it and so that is what i have so far and that is where i am going to be um creating my temperature blanket and everything will be in here my notebook will be in there my scissors my sample and i think even as i finish the the, the blanket is it's big there's plenty of room for it to fit in here that's what i think because it's big enough so i'm happy with that uh, uh my plan to upcycle this box and as soon as i finish printing it up with contact paper then i'll come back and share it with you if you have any plans to make a temperature blanket this year please share down in the comments I am thinking of uh, starting a Facebook page where we can all share what we are working on in terms of the temperature blanket and other things. If this is something that would interest you, leave a comment down below. And I hope that I'm not the only one who's doing this. I, well, I know that I'm not the only one who's doing this because a lot of people have commented about it, but I would be interested to see what you're using uh how your experience is going uh what yarn you're using are you knitting are you crocheting leave all that information down below in the comments and uh share with the rest of us i'm also going to leave some extra links to other places that i found helpful when i was doing my research and hopefully it will help someone so i'm going to be starting my blanket today today is january 1st 2024 and i'm going to be doing updates at least once a month i'll try to do them more often but i know that that might not work but uh i'm going to be doing them at least once a month and i'll try to do them more often if i can so that is all i have for you today and until next time Happy New Year and happy knitting!